The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney that is responsible for the formation of urine. The urinary system is closely associated with the cardiovascular system. Since the cardiovascular system contains blood, and blood has the plasma, which contains the electrolytes, the salts, and any waste products that the body wants to get rid of. So before we begin identifying the parts of the nephron, we need to identify the parts of the cardiovascular system that are associated with the nephron. Recall from the cardiovascular system chapter that arteries are defined as blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart and veins are blood vessels that carry blood to the heart. And 99% of the time we associate arteries with oxygen rich blood and veins with oxygen poor blood. So cardiovascular system structures associated with the nephron include the arterial, which are tiny branches off of the renal artery. Branching from an arterial is the afferent arterial. And the afferent arterial leads into a ball of capillaries called the glomerulus. Exiting the glomerulus is another artery called the efferent arterial. And the efferent arterial will give way to or give rise to paratubular capillaries. Venules, which merge to form the renal vein, and paratubular capillaries, which surround the tubes of the nephron. Next, we'll identify the parts of the nephron. The first part of the nephron is this C-shaped structure called Bowman's capsule. The glomerulus plus Bowman's capsule together form the renal corpuscle. After Bowman's capsule is the proximal convoluted tubule. Followed by the descending limb of the loop of Henle. The ascending limb of the loop of Henle. The distal convoluted tubule. And the collecting duct. There are three processes that are involved in the formation of urine. The first process is glomerular filtration, which is the separation of smaller substances in the plasma, such as glucose, amino acids, ions, and water, from larger substances in the plasma, such as platelets, white blood cells, red blood cells, and proteins. The second process is tubular reabsorption. Tubular reabsorption is the movement of substances from the tubules of the nephron into the paratubular capillaries. And finally, the last process of urine formation is tubular secretion. Tubular secretion is the movement of substances from the paratubular capillaries into the tubules of the nephron. Glomerular filtration occurs at the renal corpuscle. Here, substances are delivered to the nephron via the afferent arterial and into the glomerulus. Smaller substances easily diffuse across the membrane of Bowman's capsule leaving behind larger substances in the glomerulus, which will eventually be moved into the efferent arterial. The smaller substances in Bowman's capsule is now called the filtrate, and will move through the kidney tubules. Depending on the body's needs, these substances can be reabsorbed or added to to be eliminated as waste. After Bowman's capsule, the filtrate moves into the proximal convoluted tubule. Taking a closer look at the proximal convoluted tubule, we see that substances such as water, glucose, amino acids, ions such as sodium and chloride are reabsorbed back into the body via the paratubular capillaries. From the proximal convoluted tubule, substances then move into this U-shaped structure called the loop of Henle. And there are two parts to the loop of Henle. There's the descending limb and the ascending limb. Taking a closer look at the descending limb of Lufa Henley, we notice that there is further tubular reabsorption of water. And in the ascending limb of the loop of Henley, we see further tubular reabsorption of sodium and chloride ions. After the loop of Henley, the reigning substances enter the distal convoluted tubule. 
In the distal convoluted tubule, we see the tubular secretion of ammonia, hydrogen ions, potassium ions, and drugs. And finally, after the distal convoluted tubule, the substance is now called urine enters the collecting duct. And at the collecting duct, we see the last of tubular reabsorption of water. And this is where the dilution or the concentration of urine occurs. Once urine has been produced by the kidney and transported to the urinary bladder, it's now time for urine to be expelled from the body. Micturition is another term used for urination. The urinary bladder is composed of transitional epithelial tissue and smooth muscle, and embedded in the wall of the urinary bladder are sensory receptors or stretch receptors that are attached to these sensory neurons that'll synapse at the spinal cord with motor neurons that will stimulate the contraction of the smooth muscles that line the bladder walls. When the bladder becomes distended because it is filling with urine, the stretch receptors within the walls of the bladder send an action potential down the sensory neuron, and that action potential will carry on to the motor neuron, causing the smooth muscles of the urinary bladder to contract. Another action potential from the sensory neuron will be sent up the spinal cord to the motor cortex of the cerebrum. From there, another action potential with motor input will be sent to another motor neuron to stimulate the opening of the urinary sphincters. And there are two urinary sphincters. There's an internal sphincter, which is the sphincter closest to the urinary bladder that's composed of smooth muscle and under involuntary control, and an external sphincter, which is composed of skeletal muscle, which is under voluntary control. So as the smooth muscles that line the urinary bladder contract, the sphincters, the urinary sphincters, relax and open, allowing urine to pass through into the urethra.